Hi, it's T Fit here with Fit Bully TV. I've dropped one of the last dogs off. Listen, shout out to all those people who approached me at the airport, shook my hand, took a picture, got a video. You guys shocked me a little bit. I didn't get a chance to do more on my end. Hey, what's going on? That dog thing get crazy. I'm delirious after uh, three days of traveling. <laughs> to be clear, you don't even know what's going on anymore. You just want to get on and off the plane. But at any who, we got Tronisha here. <clears throat> and what this is, is him ready to work. He knows I got the good stuff. <laughs> he can smell it in my pocket. <laughs> and he wants to do what, what I need him to do. But you got to slow Tron down. Tron's becoming more independent in the way of, in which he thinks. But that also is a good thing because that means he's now thinking. Now, he's never... Let me take that back. I was going to say he's never been an idiot, but he ain't been the brightest. But as you see, he's getting smarter by the second. So, today we're going to do a little couple things with Tron. But more so, we're just going to talk a little dog people. You see where his jaw set is? See where his jaw is? <laughs> now, he... He's not gonna stay still because I haven't been here and he wants to play. He wants to play, boy. He's dark. Boy. Now, most people couldn't hold up an 80 pound dog <laughs> and harass him. But that's why they my dogs. Tron has what you call massive traits, and you can see it in his jawline. A terrier's jaw, and I'll draw this in another episode, drops from the nose, it literally, whoop whoop. Bulldog drops, let's say this is the nose, drops here, goes under, a lot of overlay. One of the things that you'll realize, especially because they're adding more massive, we have working dogs. Reason why I like a tight lip is because it's not uncommon for a dog to bite through his lip. Like, imagine your dog biting somebody, doing some work, that jaw get too loose, and he bite through his lip. Now, it's not so prominent, from my understanding, in the Mastiffs that do work, but they were bred to have that jaw and a little bit of an undershot too, so they could hold on to uh, predators, prey, uh, and, dirt and bad guys. When you start adding different components, but you don't test the function of it, you tend to run into problems long term. And for us, Tron, his lips are good enough, but you see, it almost, it's too much. It's too much. He's probably one of the tightest ones we got. And if I showed you his dad, you would see how droopy that face is. And I want to avoid that at all costs. Uh, because again, when he gets to, to hanging on to something, I don't want him to bite and then have to reset or bite through his jaw. When you think about the Malinois, the, the, the Dutch Shepherds, um, and various other dogs that the police use, how tight are them jaws? When that Shepherd opens his mouth, you see all those teeth. And that thing, he, he do like this, he get to smiling as they say, all them teeth are showing. Uh, bully get too droopy in his face, and he starts growling, you might see the back teeth a little bit, and maybe a little jaw, he had to open his mouth real wide, so you're like, eh. He, he talking tough, but I've seen and been up close and personal, literally with mouths and all kinds of shepherds. When them jokers open their mouth and that jaw, that, that little lip right there, it looks like that there, it goes up, they about to go to work. And one of the things I learned when I was watching some of the police officers do work out in California was when their dogs bite, if they bite you here, they keep punching in. So literally when the dog comes off the bite, It'll be two marks that are in the same place. It'll get more, it'll get worse for the bad guy, but it'll be right here and just get worse. It's like same, same place. A defensive biter pulls, pull, he bites and pulls away, bites, pulls away. So it's almost like he's tearing flesh. And believe it or not, you don't want the dog, even in a situation where it's chasing a bad guy and gets on a bite, to bite defensively. It's not the goal. Defensive biter starts looking like a lawsuit to the police. You're like, ah, that's not a good dog to be doing some bite work. <sighs> Step one, and I think Jamarcus and Stan are going to work on this stuff. We're going to talk a little bit more in the next episode. But they're putting together a process to making sure that people know how to do bite work. So you want to join our pet achievers because I'm going to walk you through every step specifically with Hera to get her to do some of that stuff. But guys, you should be able to. 
grab your dog's back leg and your dog not bite you, not fight you. You should be able to grab your dog's tail. What are you smelling? And the dog again, not lose their crap. I've done this when they are pulling and playing and biting on the, the rope together and uh, you know, had no issues. That's because trust in my opinion and experience is one of the most important things you and your dog could ever have, is trust. And you know where that comes from? Like anything in life, time, energy, and experiences. And realistically, you want to be able to trust your dog. You know why I could trust my dog at the time to go spend as much time with, you know, like my 90-year-old grandmother back in the day? Because I put her in so many scenarios and situations where I knew that no matter what, say my grandmother fell on her. My grandmother, she broke her hip. Uh, they said before she officially passed, uh, they realized she had a stroke. And that's how she fell the, one of the last times before she died. She messed her hip up, falling. So imagine she fell on the dog and the dog's just even being there to try to protect you. The dog might be there being like, hey, calm down. You might want to sit down and she might not be able to pick up on the dog's behavior. Don't sit down, fall on the dog and then she, the dog crush her or the, start biting her. Okay, now, that would be a bad situation for me. I would never want that phone call. But Anaya was, at the time, um, was so, she had the, she had the demeanor where no matter what would have happened, my Nana would always be fine. And that's the point. Stan talks about it. His kids step on Rocco's tail on accident, just playing around the house. No reactive behavior. You want to solve that reactivity by making sure you and your dog have a clear line of trust. And I harass them a lot so they know who's in charge. But even more importantly, feeding time, and we'll show you some other stuff, things that we do to start building that trust. But it sounds weird, but touch your dog everywhere, literally. Touch him everywhere in his mouth, his eyeballs, his face, and Tron's in a different zone right now, but again, I've already done plenty of videos of me harassing him and Ego when they're doing whatever that they're doing. Stay tuned, take care of your dogs, people. Remember to slow down, and uh, <laughs> we're gonna talk about traits in detail in the very, very, very near future.